Hello 28,000 plus subscribers and watchers. What's up? It's me, Vibs from Slidenote here. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to run Swift, Mac OS X, Yosemite, iOS and Xcode 6 Plus inside Windows. Now you're going to need the following things to do this. First, download and install VMware Workstation. Second, patch your VMware so that it can support running OS X, Yosemite inside it. Third, of course, download Mac OS X, Yosemite. Install that inside your VMware workstation then configure the various settings so that your Yosemite can work without lagging and causing performance issues Ultimately install VMware tools, which is again going to do the same thing and then install your Xcode 6 plus Inside VMware workstation that is inside your OS and ultimately you can run Swift by creating a blank project or playground inside that Xcode 6 plus so the following things are going to be done in this video in order so let's get started so installing VMware is pretty straightforward you just click on the setup file here and then simply click next click accept the agreement next I'm gonna select custom install and I'm going to uncheck the option where they're going to ask me to share some data and stuff and that's the reason why I'm selecting custom install and of course disable product updates now one more thing if your VMware file has other patches with it along with the exe don't install those patches because Yosemite has something with it as well and that's exactly what we are going to be installing when we put Yosemite so the install is over at this point just click finish to ensure that your Mac OS X Yosemite runs on VMware you have to patch your VMware and that can be done by going to this folder unlock all if your system is running Windows you can go to the Windows folder and there you can see install.cmd now this is the script that you want to run from command line now you could run this directly by clicking on it but sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't hence go to the command prompt in the administrator mode and then navigate to this folder through your command prompt and then try to execute the script install.cmd here so let me get to that you should be able to see the install.cmd and the other commands out there inside that folder so now when you click on install make sure that your VMware is closed before doing all this and at this point if you notice it says file copied successfully found OS entry and it is successful where it says finished at the bottom so at this point I have my Yosemite go inside there take the VMX file just open it inside your VMware station and of course make sure you click take ownership if it asks you and then we need to configure certain settings then we can go to edit virtual machine settings I'm gonna keep the RAM at 8 GB because that's what I can afford on my system you have to see what you can afford on yours processor I'm gonna keep two of them and I'm gonna keep the number of cores as four making it a total eight then I'll take the hard disk and let me check what it says over there CD drive I'll here I'll use an ISO image and make it point to the darwin.iso file which is inside my unlock all tools there you go darwin.iso network adapter i don't have to do anything here it looks pretty good usb compatibility i could select 3.0 but for now let me just stick to 2.0 sound card and display another display won't be that good initially but we can fix that with our VMware tools once we install that inside our OS X Yosemite so at this point everything looks pretty good I'll click OK and I'll simply power on this virtual machine and it's gonna say blah 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 I'll say I copied it and depending on how good your system is or how bad your system is this is gonna take quite an amount of time so if everything is good you should be able to see this loading screen at this point and depending on how fast your system is that's gonna go fast so at this point I'm asked to select the region it's not showing India here so I'll have to probably say show all at the bottom there so I'm gonna hit that and I'm gonna select my country by typing I to get India then click continue select the keyboard keep it US continue how do you want to transfer your information no information transfer iCloud well you need to enter your Apple ID at this point so for the Apple ID it's free you can easily create it on developer.apple.com 
just put your ID that's the username here and the password in the password section and you should be able to log in without any issues and it says allow iCloud to use the information click yes or no whatever you want and of course it's gonna present you with the terms and conditions make sure you agree and check it out use my iCloud account to log in oops by mistake I'm gonna select that enter my account name and simply hit continue this is gonna take some time and of course I don't want to send any diagnostics so at this point it gives me some option to use the cloud chain I'll set up later and if everything goes good you should be able to see the screen where it says setting up dot 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 and BAM there's our Mac OS X Yosemite running inside Windows now at this point there are certain things that we need to do like install VMware tools to make this a bit smoother and of course the dock is coming at the bottom now and you can see there's the VMware tool so let's go get to work with that so at this point to improve the performance of stuff that we have we need to install VMware tools just click over there on VMware tools is gonna ask you install VMware tools click OK and all you have to do is just hit continue over there and it's gonna ask you your password for your Apple ID just enter that password over there so if the installation is done you need to restart your Mac OS X Yosemite just hit restart over there and remember don't close the tab on your VMware while it's getting restarted because otherwise your Yosemite is gonna get corrupted and there is no other way but to do it do the whole thing again and I had this experience personally and hence I'm stating that you strongly do nothing while the restart takes place now depending on your system again and its performance this is gonna take some to quite an amount of time so don't lose hope if you see a blank screen for 10-15 minutes in front of you also while the install takes place you may notice your screen flicker by showing black and white patches on it don't fret if you take a, if you see that on your screen so at this point the installation of VMware tools is done and hopefully your system runs a bit smoother and faster now that VMware tools is installed again you just have to log in enter your Apple ID password and you should be able to go back right to your desktop once again one of the most crucial things in the entire video that you're watching right now is to download the right files from different places you need the perfect working setup of VMware workstation. You need the right files for OS X Yosemite and not to mention Xcode. The last time when I made a video about Mac OS X and VMware, I had posted direct links to all the files and that got me into a bit of trouble with legal action and threats and stuff like that coming on YouTube. So this time, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to post direct download links for all these files that you're watching. However, I'll give you the hash codes for each of these files. If you're a programmer or an aspiring programmer, I'm sure you know how to search hash codes with a torrent search engine. So in this, for my case, as far as I'm concerned, downloading is very much simpler for me because I'm using an app over here, which is still not released to the public yet. The app here is called the Pirate app. Now this is still an alpha release because there's a lot of things that need to be fixed in this, but it currently works with Kickass. If you go here, you can simply go to the settings of this app and you can select whatever search engine you want you can see there are all the search engines in the world that is bitsnoop damnoid extra torrent s33d isohand kickass mininova blah 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 it's a big list so going back here i'll simply sort my results by the newest first so that i get the latest torrent out there there's all sorts of sorting options available on the app as well and i'll simply go back here to my search section i'll simply enter x code here to find it and then i said done over here and it's gonna give me the list of latest torrents on Xcode from Kickass. So at this point, I see that the second torrent is better because it has some activity compared to the first one. So I'm gonna select that here, select click on that, and it's gonna give me the option to download on the phone and directly email. And of course, there are other options that are coming up. I'll simply select email here, and it's gonna ask me to email the torrent to my Gmail. So I'm gonna simply select send over there at the top, and if I go to my browser here and if I simply refresh my email inbox at this point there you go there's my complete email and my pirate app inside the torrent file now all I have to do is simply download this torrent file from the email 
with all the details in it and simply start it on uTorrent. Like you see, it takes me just 10 seconds to actually download a file compared to you searching and doing stuff. So I'm going to be releasing this app soon enough and hopefully you guys have a good feedback for this. So for now, let's fo focus on how to get that Xcode inside VMware and get it up and running. So at this point, simply log inside your VMware's virtual macOS and all you got to do is take your pen drive which contains the Xcode DMG file that you downloaded on your Windows. Just connect it here at the bottom of your PC and if everything is done right, you should be able to see this drive which says no name. You can open it here. You will see the Xcode DMG file inside it. Just copy this file to your desktop here and that's what I have in my case. I'm going to just click on this file. Just double click it. It's going to say open. You can just skip the verification if you don't want to see that. So at this point, there's your Xcode.app which is starting up. Just double click on that. And there you go. It says welcome to Xcode. And you can say create a new project here. And at this point, you have many choices here. For my case, I'm going to simply say OSX application command line 2. Hit next here. And you have to give it a name. I'll call it test. And the language, if you can see here, there is both Swift, Objective-C, and of course, there is C and C++. So select Swift over here. Just click next at this point. So it's going to ask you where you want to save that project. In my case, I'm going to simply say desktop here and just click create at this point. It's going to create the folder for test something. And there you go. All the setup and configuration options are being shown here. You can just open your main.swift file, which contains your code. And there's the hello world that we wanted to run so badly on our Swift. I'm simply going to modify this a bit. At this point, you can just save the file here. Just close it, simply go at the top and run it here. And as you can see, Hello World from Webs and Swift is showing at the bottom, which means I've successfully ran the Hello World Swift program on Windows. So hopefully you guys have understood something about how all this setup works. Most of all, don't forget to go to your BIOS on your PC and set your Intel hardware virtualization enabled or Intel VTX. If you're using an AMD processor, be sure to Google it how you set up your AMD for hardware virtualization because without that this whole thing is not gonna work if you like what you saw please like this video share this video subscribe to slide note and don't forget to like the pirate apps page at facebook.com slash my have a nice day and thanks